Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. We have already taken a look at the Indy NXT series, but now it's time to look at the big boys in IndyCar. Same deal, let's look over all the teams and drivers set to start in 2023, and maybe at the end we will try and pick a winner. Leave your predictions in the comments. And with a lot of teams and drivers to get through, we better get started. AJ Foyt Enterprises. The former Haas F1 test driver Santino Ferrucci, now disgraced and banished back to America, has not won a race since 2015. I feel like at one stage he was destined for a Haas F1 seat. Now he is a part-time IndyCar driver. Well, for 2023, he has a full-time seat for the first time since 2020, and he can get back to chasing down that first IndyCar podium. At this point, Ferrucci is clinging on to have the best career he can possibly have. He's not setting the world alight. His Danish teammate is Ben Pedersen. He's won races in Indy Lights and British F3, but has never finished higher than fourth in any championship and is going to be pretty quiet in IndyCar. Not a great lineup for AJ Foyt. Andretti. Let's just do all the Andretti cars together. Colton Herter may have missed out on a Formula 1 seat and he did have a poor 2022. Actually, the last year was pretty terrible on and off the field. But his name is still on everyone's lips and if Andretti do get onto the Formula 1 grid, Herter is almost guaranteed a seat. He needs to keep performing. I think a lot of people feel he can be a champion. Kyle Kirkwood is on his second season. The 2021 Indy Lights champion only had one 10th place finish in 2022 and it was a 10th place. Moving up from AJ Foyt to Andretti might give him a boost. Experienced Formula 1 driver Romain Grosjean has been a letdown in IndyCar so far. He only improved slightly in 2022 and is still to take his first win. That win and a top 10 finish in the standings has to be the goal of the Frenchman in 2023. I don't know how Devlin DeFrancesco survived for another year. He was terrible in 2022 and has actually never been that great in any series. His best finish was a 12th place at Gateway, so just do better than that, Devlin. Finally, the experienced Marco Andretti will be back for the Indy 500. Not really surprising. Outside of Herta, this is a very average set of drivers for Andretti. They all really need to do better. Arrow McLaren. The expanded lineup for McLaren includes some familiar faces and some new. Pato O'Ward is starting his fourth year with the team, but fell back in the standings last year. He knows, and we know, he can be a title contender, and that will be where he is again in 2023. Felix Rosenquist has had his day. He is not the young hotshot anymore. He has a single IndyCar win in 2020, and now enters his third season with McLaren, still having not taken a win for them. Former Indy 500 winner Alexander Rossi joins McLaren after spending the rest of his seven years in IndyCar with Andretti. He's a great racer, but he has been slipping down the order for the last few years. Hopefully a change can springboard him back up. Tony Kanaan will be at the Indy. He won it 10 years ago, so maybe lightning can strike twice, just really slowly apparently. Chip Ganassi. Marcus Ericsson, as long-time viewers will know, has done everything he can to make me look like a clown. After years of thinking he had the driving talent of Soggy Pudding, suddenly he's found his calling. He's at his peak and I wonder if there is a championship for him at the end of that rainbow. Six-time champion Scott Dixon was back in the groove last year and it is 20 years since his first championship. Can he become the greatest seven-time champion in motorsport today? Maybe. The long drawn-out contract saga of Alex Palau was a waste of time in the end because he re-signed for the team anyway. The 2021 champion is back and is the third of these Chip Ganassi drivers who could be champion. Another New Zealander has joined the grid. Marcus Armstrong will be doing the road courses in his debut year. I had high hopes for him back in 2020 after his run to second place in Formula 3, but despite four wins in Formula 2, he never finished higher than 13th in the championship and now moves to America. He is good on his day, but this will be a year of learning for the Kiwi. Two-time Indy 500 winner Takuma Sato joins two to do the ovals. Shame he hasn't got a seat for a full season. I do like the Japanese legend. Dale Coyne Racing. I was ready to write off David Malukas as a forgettable nobody until he took a great second place at the gateway. He has to do a bit more in his second season, but at least he has something to build off of. 
The second Dale Coyne driver might be my favourite person in the world ever. Stingray Rob, a name more American than Ronald Reagan beating an eagle to death with a hamburger. He didn't win Indy Lights in 2022, but I am happy he is here and I can't wait to see him in action. Go on, Stingray Rob. Dryer and Rainbow Racing slash Kuzik Motorsports. They're running Stefan Wilson in the Indy 500 and that is it. They won't win. Ed Carpenter Racing. The boss is doing the oval tracks in 2023, but not the road tracks. He also has two other drivers on his books. Connor Daly had his best ever year in IndyCar in 2022. He finished 17th overall. Connor Daly is not a great single-seater driver. It'll be interesting to see if he breaks the top 16 this year. Renus VK is the better Ed Carpenter driver. He has at least finished 12th in the standings. He has also won in IndyCar, unlike Daly, and took a podium in Alabama last year. Ed Carpenter Racing are pretty hopeless, though. Junkos Hollinger Racing. Ferrari test driver Callum Eilert has not performed as well as expected. This will be his second full season and he needs to do better. Callum Eilert has had a good career. Alfa Romeo reserve driver, runner-up in Formula 2. Maybe IndyCar is just not for him. He is joined by Argentinian Agustin Canapino. He is 33 and he is making his IndyCar debut. The four-time Turismo Carretera and double TC2000 champion, has not done a lot of racing outside of Argentina, and I imagine he's going to be completely out of his depth in IndyCar. This guy will be a mobile chicane. Maya Shank Racing. Helio Castroneves is 47 years old and is back for another season. And why not? He is still a top driver and a race winner. He's just taken his third Daytona 24 hours in a row, and he only won the Indy 500 a couple of years ago. He is a really good driver, no, he is an IndyCar legend. Simon Pagano ain't half bad either, another Indy 500 winner and IndyCar champion, but he hasn't been competitive since 2019, and Meyershank are still a midfield team. They could take a shock win somewhere, but they're going to be struggling to finish in the top 10. Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. Graham Rahal is a decent driver, but he hasn't won an IndyCar race since 2017, but he grinds results and is usually around the top end of the midfield. Six years without a win though, that's a big gap, and it'll be a miracle if he can add to his six previous wins. Jack Harvey is a great talent, and he had to get away from Meyer Shank to prove it. Lanigan Racing may be another midfield team, but they should push him a bit further towards the front. It just didn't happen in 2022. He is good, and there's a good chance he could be the top Ray Hull Letterman Lanigan Racing driver come year's end. That's if Christian Lundgaard doesn't come good. The super talented Dane is a wonderful driver. It was sad to see him slip away from the Formula 1 scene, but I think he can flourish here in IndyCar. He took a podium last year, and I think he can win in 2023. Catherine Legg will be at the Indy 500, and so far she is the only female on the grid. One female in one race, and that's if she qualifies. Team Penske. The final team is the one most likely to produce a champion. Reigning champion Will Power is going for title number 3, and will almost certainly be near the top somewhere at the end of 2023. He did only win one race last year, so maybe that's something he can improve, as long as he doesn't shed the consistency that took him to the title. Joseph Newgarden is also looking for a third title. He has finished second three years in a row, and is still to win the Indy 500, but he is one of the best drivers on the grid. In fact, he may technically be better than Will Power and Scott Dixon. I want to see Newgarden on top again, but I think our final driver will stop him in 2023. Scott McLaughlin is getting better and better, and this is his year. The former Supercars champion took three wins in 2022, and I think he is going to improve on that for a Penske 1-2-3 in the championship. They were 1-2-4 last year, so it is definitely not out of the realms of possibility. So they are the drivers lining up in the IndyCar this weekend. It is a stacked lineup, and I'm really looking forward to watching IndyCar in 2023. As I said, I think Penske will dominate this year, and I am going to go for New Garden to win the Indy 500, finally. I have said this for the last few years, but this year I really feel it. New Garden is going to get some milk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to subscribe. Formula 1 predictions will be coming soon, and previews for Formula 2 and 3, as well as a review of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.